We have uh, our next uh, panel. I'd like to welcome Dr. Jonathan Mann, the AIDS coordinator for the World Health Organization. Two months ago, the WHO announced an international plan for facing the AIDS crisis, and we look forward to hearing about the worldwide scope of uh, this deadly plague. I'd like to welcome um, Dr. St. John of the Pan American Health Organization is coordinating <coughs> the AIDS uh, activities in this uh, hemisphere. We're delighted to, we've had the good opportunity to work closely with Dr. Mala, the World Health Organization. We hope that <coughs> you'll give him uh, my best personal uh, regards. We admire the leadership that he's uh, provided in the World Health uh, Organization and are very mindful of uh, the very important service that they provide in many different areas of uh, health policy. And we're delighted to have Dr. St. John here as well. We've had a chance to uh, work closely with uh, Panho and other organizations, particularly in the wor work of uh, immunization of children in uh, Central America and other health uh, areas, which has been enormously um, impressive. I think it's been sort of the one uh, small silver thread in an otherwise gloomy situation, certainly in El Salvador, other Central American countries, a work that's been done uh, by uh, Panjo. We're, we've got a major new challenge. We'll look forward <coughs> to hearing from, uh, from each of, uh, of you. We'll start with yes. uh, Dr. Th Mann. Thank you very much, Mr. Would Chairman. <clears throat> AIDS is a global health problem for both the developed and we'll the nice developing and, uh, world. We'll be nice be quiet now, if we could, please, as uh, we can. We're, we've all been very courteous. This has been a very instructive and important hearing, and we want to make sure that our witnesses are given all the courtesies which they're entitled to. Dr. Mann. Thank you very much. AIDS is a global health problem for both the developing and the developed world. The numbers of reported cases and the numbers of countries reporting cases have both increased dramatically. In December 1982, 711 AIDS cases were reported from only 16 countries. As of early this week, nearly 39,000 cases of AIDS have now been reported from 85 countries representing all continents for a more than 50-fold increase in the number of reported cases in the last four years. In the Americas, 33 countries have reported AIDS. In Europe, there have been approximately 4,000 AIDS cases reported thus far, and we estimate there are between a half a million to one million infected persons, such that by the end of 1988, 25 to 30,000 cases of AIDS are expected in Europe. In Asia, the AIDS virus is starting to threaten that continent. And although there have only been fewer than 100 cases of AIDS reported from 10 countries in Asia, the virus has penetrated the high-risk groups, cases have occurred, and the future of the continent may be at stake in terms of the question of whether the virus penetrates the large populations of Asia in the future. Africa is clearly the most affected part of the world. The World Health Organization estimates that there are between two and five million Africans infected with the AIDS virus now. And we know that in parts of Central, Eastern, and Southern Africa, between four and 15% of healthy adults are currently infected now with the AIDS virus. By 1991, we expect that there will be up to 1.5 million new cases of AIDS occurring in Africa, resulting exclusively from people already infected with the virus. Worldwide, the World Health Organization estimates that there have been over 100,000 cases of AIDS since the beginning of the epidemic, and that 5 to 10 million persons may be infected throughout the world. By 1991, we expect that there may be 50 to 100 million infected persons, and this all depends on what happens in Asia and South America. If the virus penetrates those large populations, those estimates will be conservative. Worldwide, the broad impact of the AIDS virus infection goes beyond the health statistics to realities and to fears. All over the world, there have been personal and family tragedies as a result of fear and ignorance about this virus. The loss to society has occurred in at least two ways. First, through the selective loss of 20 to 40-year-olds, in other words, fathers and mothers, and secondly, through the stigmatization of different groups in different societies. While in one society, homosexual and bisexual men may be stigmatized, in other parts of the world, hemophiliacs, female prostitutes, Westerners, or Africans are stigmatized. At the national level, AIDS poses a threat to economic and social development and stability. 
particularly in those parts of the world where the urban elites are particularly uh, severely affected. In addition, AIDS has provoked reflex reactions at the international level, reactions to restrict international travel or trade, reactions to blame others, often on the basis of political expediency, to blame others for the problem. Finally, the threat to children is critical because AIDS poses a direct threat to the success of the child survival initiatives which have so painstakingly been put into place in the developing world. AIDS is a dual threat to children in the developing world. First, because when the mother is infected, the child may be infected, and there are parts of Central and Eastern Africa where 10% of pregnant women are infected with AIDS virus, such that 5% or 1 in 20 of all children born in those areas are born infected with the virus. But in addition, children are particularly susceptible to diseases such as malaria, which result in a need for injections, which may be given with needles and syringes that are not sterile, and in a need for blood transfusion in areas of the world where blood is not screened and where one out of every 10 units of blood may contain the AIDS virus. If we look overall, therefore, at the stresses to society created by the mere 100,000 cases of AIDS that have occurred thus far, then we have to project what more than a million new cases of AIDS occurring in the next five years will mean globally. Now, global AIDS prevention and control requires first a recognition of the problem. And we could really call 1986 the year of global AIDS awareness, the year when countries and people began to realize that this is not a problem restricted to one group, that this is truly a global problem. On November 20th of last year, the Director General of the World Health Organization announced that in the same spirit with which WHO undertook smallpox eradication in the past, the WHO is undertaking now the more urgent, more complex, and more difficult task of global AIDS prevention and control. This will require the, the development of strong national AIDS <coughs> prevention and control programs in every country throughout the world and international leadership, coordination, and cooperation. WHO started its AIDS program in 1986, and we received a very vital initial moral and financial support from the U.S. Agency for International Development, which allowed us to start as quickly as we did. We've developed a 1987 action plan. It's in the discussion phase with the donor agencies throughout the world. In summary, AIDS is truly a global health problem. The consequences of AIDS virus infection at the personal, family, and social level are profound. AIDS threatens the limited health gains that have been achieved, particularly in the area of child survival throughout the world, and it threatens economic and social development. The epidemic of this virus is of extraordinary scope and unprecedented urgency and requires a response of unprecedented energy, creativity, and resource. We are, Mr. Chairman, truly at a historic moment, at the beginning, really, of a worldwide epidemic whose dimensions and scope we are only beginning to truly understand. And it is clear that actions that we take now have greater potential to affect the ultimate shape of that epidemic than actions taken in the future. Thank you, sir.